most of the gastric cancers are diagnosed in an advanced stage and uh, the five-year survival rate, we are close to just about 25%. Uh, what I will not discuss is the imaging modalities, that is the scans, the endoscopic ultrasound, the PET scans, or the superiority of a particular surgical technique. Uh, previous speaker has already discussed about it, but I will discuss one, non-cardiac gastric cancers. I think there is a big divide between uh, managing esophagogastric junction tumors versus the uh, stomach cancers. So I would stick to non-cardiac gastric cancers. I would define what is an advanced gastric cancer. I think there are still controversies in definition. Uh, we will talk about multivisceral resections in advanced gastric cancers and its outcomes, whether they really benefit. And I would now talk about also a specific clinical scenario of a positive peritoneal cytology and peritoneal carcinoma. So we are still following uh, the AJCC, UICC, TNM staging till about 2010. We had the seventh edition, which had, which had renewed uh, T categories, uh, which we are following till date. It reduced the cutoffs of the end status, that is 16 nodes are needed for accurate staging, and a positive peritoneal cytology lavage was labeled as M1 for the first time in about 2010 edition. Presently, we are following the eighth edition for all these uh, students, the postgraduates, and uh, those who are likely to hear this on the YouTube. We are presently following the eighth edition, and in which there is a slight revision of only the N3 nodal status, which is converted to N3A and N3B for prognosticate the outcomes of uh, resections and multimodality therapies of gastric cancers. Otherwise, uh, seventh edition uh, and eighth edition don't come with too much of a major difference. So these are the, uh, this is the TNM staging downloaded from the NCCN uh, guideline. And what, uh, when I talk about the advanced gastric cancer, we are restricting to a talk of the T size, that is the tumors, which are in the T3 or the T4 categories. And if you see the T3 category, the difference is the tumor penetrates the subserosal connective tissue without invasion of the visceral peritoneum or the serosa. Now, mind you, without involvement of the serosa, there can still be involvement of the gastrocolic and the gastrohepatic ligaments and the greater and the lesser omentum. Whereas the T4 tumors, they invade the serosa and the adjacent structures. And when we say adjacent structures, that adjacent structure could involve the spleen, when the tumor is close to the body of the stomach uh, or, or towards the fundus, they could involve the transverse colon towards the body of the stomach. It can involve the adjacent diaphragm, the adjacent diaphragm especially towards the fundus. It can involve the adjacent liver, especially at uh, the lesser curved tumors and the segment two and three of the livers. And it can involve the pancreas, abdominal wall, adrenal gland, et cetera, et cetera, and the retroperitoneum. But what is important uh, for all those uh, undergrads and the postgrads to understand is that involvement of the diaphragm and the liver or the abdominal wall does not constitute a metastatic disease. This would be considered as a local extension of the tumor because of the proximity of these particular organs to the stomach. Intramural extension of the tumor into the duodenum or into the esophagus, again, is not considered as an invasion of an adjacent structure, but it is classified using the depth of greatest invasion. So what we are restricting is to T3 and T4 without giving too much of focus on the N status or the M status. And this is one classical CT scan where the arrowheads are pointing towards an extramural invasion of the serosa. We are just discussing the T status. We are not even discussing the N status. I would not even look at the N status to suggest that this is a locally advanced gastric cancer. So as I mentioned, there are controversial definitions. Many authors have labeled this as T3 and T4 neoplasm. Some studies still involve a parietal invasion initiating right from the stage 2 T2. So even cases which are T2 and node positive should still be considered as a locally advanced or an advanced gastric cancer. When it comes to the end status, even in the absence of regional node involvement, that is N0, the, the tumors with T3 or T4 will still be called as advanced gastric cancer. And without taking an M parameter, that means irrespective of presence of, or absence of distant metastasis, whether it is M1 or M0, the tumors will be labeled as advanced gastric cancer. So which means what? Can we come to a working definition of an advanced gastric cancer? And for a surgeon, I'm talking purely from a surgical point, it will be a non early, non-metastatic gastric cancer, which is infiltrating deeper than the submucosal layer with 
or without nodal involvement. Now, as I said that even without nodal involvement, if you have a T4 cancer, this will be an advanced gastric cancer. So a non-early non-metastatic gastric cancer infiltrating deeper than submucosal layer with or without nodal involvement, considering the AJCC TNM staging as T2 or 4B up to 4B, N0 to N3B or M0, this will be considered as an advanced gastric cancer for which the surgical therapy alone, while it may not always provide any advantage, still remains the central curative modality at present. We heard from Dr. Lokeshwar, the first speaker, that irrespective of whatever best chemotherapy regimens or chemo radiation regimens that you offer, the patients will still have a response rate and survival rate to close to about 40 to 45 percent and not more. So even here, I may confess that we may not be providing the best uh, option by giving surgery, it still remains a central curative modality at present with extensive surgery. And I will come to that in a bit. So what uh, are we talking about? I think uh, Dr. Khan had already mentioned about it, that today we are in the era that you have to have a multimodal management uh, of these uh, gastric cancers. And the neoadjuvant therapy of gastric cancers is actually a way decisive step forward. Now, why is it so? Because there is an early treatment of distant microscopic disease, which is often missed by many of the scanning modalities. We are ability to gauge the in vivo response to therapy and we can select out better candidates who will uh, perform well with surgery. The potential for tumor downstaging exists with uh, neoadjuvant therapy and it enhances resectability and it may also translate into better outcomes. Now, when it comes to the multimodal management with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, if you see all across the guidelines, all guidelines have recommended neoadjuvant chemotherapy for locally advanced or you may call it advanced gastric cancer because uh, pre-surgical treatments, uh, surgical patients uh, can tolerate treatment better. And there has been ample evidence that it does not increase the post-operative morbidity and the mortality rates. So you have all the trials that Dr. Lokeshwar had mentioned. The R0 resection rates are up, but not the overall survivals. It is still questionable. So we are looking at R0 resections and probably being more happy that, yes, we did R0 resections, but are we really benefiting these patients? We have questionable evidence of that. Lot of staging and surgical drawbacks exist in all of these trials. If you see in depth details of what Dr. Lokeshwar had pointed out on the slides, you have more of T1 and T2 cancers. That means even more of early and operable gastric cancers have been given this chemotherapy and you have better outcomes labeled up with pathological complete response and uh, R0 response. So let's not get into the those debates of that. But yes, worldwide, we have biased evidences, but uh, chemotherapy is the norm today for advanced gastric cancers. Now, uh, Dr. Khan has already again uh, uh, given his philosophy about the surgical extensions. And I would say the gastric resection to achieve an R0 resection, then whatever extent you may have to go to uh, uh, do your resection, you have to extend your gastric resection depending upon the uh, anatomical position of the tumor. 16 nodes, definitely a must. And one must look into the location extension as well as the histologic subtype. I would rather do a total gastrectomy for a diffuse subtype of a cancer somewhere towards the antrum or the body, where if it is a diffuse subtype and we really don't know, we may have a margin. Pathologists are not uh, competent enough to uh, ass assess all the margins or a proximal margin on a frozen section every time. And it makes our task very difficult and we face different clinical challenges. So proximal gastric cancers, no doubt, uh, we are all uh, probably on a consensus that total gastrectomy should be norm, though there are some group of surgeons who will still prefer a proximal gastrectomy. I personally would prefer a total gastrectomy, and there is enough literature in the evidence that total gastrectomy, uh, when it comes to outcomes, fares better compared to a proximal gastrectomy because of the extensive morbidity associated with the reflux esophagitis and, and joining of the distal stomach to the esophagus. Again, large tumors of lesser curvature or the gastric body, total gastrectomy. For antral cancers, when you get an adequate 5 centimeter margin, distal gastrectomy is the norm. Now, what about the proximal margin? This is generally a problem that distal margins, many, many a times we are struggling with less than one centimeter margins towards the duodenum and we can't resort to doing a pancreatic or duodenectomy for these patients. But what about the prox proximal margin, especially when you have an expensive growth pattern? So you need to see that if you have a T2 tumor or deeper, you need to go at least three centimeter. But while you have an infiltrative growth pattern, which your endoscopist should be able to tell you, you have to have at least five centimeters of proximal resection margin when you are doing doing a limited gastrectomy. Now, what about multivisceral resections? 
believe me, multivisceral resection gives the best chance at survival, but you must make sure that it is an R0 resection. I, we understand that there is high post-op morbidity with it. Prognostic benefit is still being de debated across various centers. And I will tell you, the problem is that we face a big surgical challenge. Challenge. Many a times there is a tumor desmoplasia where the stomach is stuck up uh, beyond the omentum to a mesocolon and probably a part of the transverse colon or probably just the capsule of the stomach or maybe just abutting the spleen. So we really don't know whether this is a true microscopic invasion into the adjacent organ is, uh, is a challenge or it is just a tumor desmoplasia because even the preoperative imaging and sometimes during the surgery we are at loss. So we need to have additional adjacent organ resections. Now, if you see this article way back in 1997 from a Japanese group where they had spoken about multi-organ resections, there was a, a paper to the effect to, to see the clinical efficacy in a retrospective study. This paper from Japan said there was a five-year survival benefit of 23 to 46% in R0 resection, but this benefit, <clears throat> excuse me, this benefit reduces to as good as 0% when you have an R plus resection. There were conflicts within the Japanese uh, 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 surgeons itself where, because uh, they are supposed to be more aggressive than any other in terms of gastric cancer in the world. So in article in 1999 talks about total gastrectomy with spine simultaneously pancreatic or splenectomy or splenectomy. Again, the survival disadvantage with additional organ dissection. So that is their criteria. One says that there is a five-year survival and the other says there is a survival disadvantage. Let's come down to one more year down and it's in our year 2000. Is there a benefit of additional organ resection in advanced gastric cancer? Again, a surgical paper from Japanese group. And they say there is higher complication rate with no survival difference. So one says there's survival dis uh, dis uh, advantage. The other one says there is a survival disadvantage. And the third one says there is no survival difference. These are the Japanese conflicts. What happens with this Italian multi-center observational study? This Italian multi-center observational study showed that there are no significant differences in the post-op morbidity and mortality rates. Now, this was important for patients that what is the effect on the morbidity and the mortality when you're doing multivisceral resections, morbidity and mortality log logically increase, but that was not the case. And five-year survival at the same point of time improved. So overall five-year survival improvement was in the range of 20% to about 38% where you did a gastrectomy plus multivisceral resection versus a gastrectomy or a palliation alone. Independent prognostic factors that were determined in this kind of group was number and type of resected organs. Now, nobody put a number that if you resect two organs, your morbidity is going to be higher, or if you resect three organs, the morbidity is going to be lower. I think surgical expertise does count in that, and your tissue respect as a surgeon does count in that. Lymph node metastasis, of course, depth of invasion, and of course, peritoneal seedling. But again, there is a big uncertainty as to what is actually the independent prognostic factor. But one factor which was common is that in almost all published studies, it was confirmed that R0 resection represents the most powerful prognostic factor. With this, if you see this latest article in the Journal of Gastrointestinal Surgery in 2021, uh, they have detected, they have segregated their entire study cohort of non-cardiac gastric adenocarcinomas and selected out patients who were T4A as well as T4B gastric adenocarcinoma without metastatic disease who underwent a gastrectomy. And they also subclassified them into those who received gastrectomy alone versus those who received gastrectomy with multivisceral resections. So if you see PT4A and T4B in both the arms, you have close to about 359 plus 347 patients, which is close to about 702 patients who have undergone a gastrectomy with multivisceral resection. What do you see between T4A and T4B? The curves are automatically talking. There is an early separation of curve between T4A and T4B, which suggests that it is the inability of surgeon to determine whether it is T4A or T4B in an operation theater. And, and probably the scans could not say it. So surgeons have given the benefit of doubt. But of course, it has benefited to some extent the patients when it comes to disease-free survival. But again, the graphs are meeting at the end of 60 months. So you do achieve five-year survival and you are uh, still not able to increase the overall survival. 
But what you look at this particular graph is something which is uh, definitely eye opening, which definitely says that the patients who underwent a margin negative gastrectomy with multivisceral resection versus those who underwent a margin positive gastrectomy, there was a clear cut and a significant difference. What it tries to highlight here is that actually gastrectomy with multivisceral resection should be the therapeutic choice in locally advanced gastric cancers where a complete and I would say margin negative resection could be realistically obtained. And when a lymph node metastatic involvement is not evident, the question is when you have such kind of advanced diseases, is the lymph node metastasis not really there? It becomes difficult to uh, ju uh, justify this, but with an acceptable post-operative morbidity and mortality rate. So multivisceral resections for gastric cancers are here to say, and you must try hard to make it as an R0 resection. Uh, the previous speaker has already spoken about lymphadenectomy. This is the D1 group uh, class uh, from uh, lymph nodes 1 to 6, and the blue ones highlight the ones which are uh, from 7 to 12, which, which actually constitute a D2 lymphadenectomy. Now, is there a debate between D1 and D2? I will just make it clear in this one slide that this is the landmark Dutch trial with uh, surgical treatment of gastric cancers over 15 years in a nationwide Dutch trial. It showed a lower rate of local recurrence and gastric cancer related morbidity in on mortality in D2 gastric cancer, in D2 lymphadenectomy. This is an article which is again in 2014, a landmark article which gave a systematic review and meta-analysis of extended lymphadenectomy in patients with resectable gastric cancer. The premise was it showed no significant differences in overall survival. Again, now I'm coming back to the same statement that we are doing more and more complex surgeries. We are doing more and more nodal dissections. We are using all robotics, laparoscopic open surgical techniques and all our experience, uh, but we are still not able to show differences in overall survival between D1 and D2. But but when you look at this meta-analysis and you look at the subgroup analysis of these patients, the analysis of patients without spleen and pancreas resection had a clear trend for overall survival and recurrence-free survival. The splenectomy and pancreatectomy were actually adding to the morbidity. So if you see the highlight, the highlight is that the spleen and pancreas sparing D2 lymphadenectomy should be the standard approach, surgical approach, where you will never go wrong in increasing the surgical morbidity or mortality. So that should be the norm. Uh, there was a mention about staging laparoscopy. It's definitely recommended and routine use should be encouraged. Unexpected or unsuspected metastatic disease, which is the distant disease, is detected in about 18 to 40%, while unexpected peritoneal metastasis is detected in about 22 to 40%. And this can actually change the line of management. In fact, I would go a step further and say that there is something which is called as a second staging, which means you perform a second staging laparoscopy because we are giving more and more of neoadjuvant chemotherapies to these patients. So patients receiving intensive chemotherapy for carcinomatosis or for gastric cancer, in which the lesions cannot be detected on the CT or the ultrasound, this may help us by a staging laparoscopy to make decisions whether we actually can go in and still do R0 gastrectomy. Mm -hmm.